it's Andrew Huang. Today's video is about polyrhythms and polymeters, which are separate concepts, but a lot of people confuse them, including me, so we should talk about it. It's Theory Thursday. <laughs> So we're gonna get into how to use polyrhythms and polymeters in composition and not just as a weird flex on social media. Jacob Collier, Adam Neely, I love you. I'm also gonna show you how to polyrhythm in music software. But first and most importantly, the difference between polyrhythms and polymeters. Polyrhythm is one of those words that unfortunately, from what I've seen, gets used incorrectly more often than correctly. And I've been guilty of this myself. A lot of the time when people say polyrhythm, what they actually mean is polymeter, which is what was happening at the start of this video. On the left we have a four note part, and on the right we have a five note part. You can count along with them with the same pulse, but uh, they have different length phrases, and so it's like there's two different time signatures, or meters, at the same tempo. That is a polymeter. Lots of people call that a polyrhythm, and it does feel like kind of a natural term for it. You know, you have two different rhythms at the same time, but polymeter is the official term. What a polyrhythm is, is when you have groups of different numbers of beats, but each group takes the same amount of time to play. So their ones always line up. We've got seven and three here as a random example. So let's listen to a seven, three polyrhythm. For every seven cowbells, you're gonna hear three cows. <laughs> It's kind of disconcerting and hard to follow along with, but if we listen to them one at a time, we can hear that each of the beats is perfectly evenly spaced. Here are the cowbells. And here are the cows. So you can easily count along with either one of them on their own, but playing them together precisely takes a lot of practice. 7-3 is a weird one though, and the most common polyrhythms are of course the simplest ones, a ratio of three to two, and a ratio of four to three. Most people can get the hang of those pretty easily, and interestingly, it's a spoken device that seems to be the most effective way to learn them. So the three to two ratio goes with the rhythm of the phrase, hot cup of tea. Hot cup of tea, hot cup of tea, hot cup of tea, hot cup of tea. And then the four to three one is a little bit profane, but they actually do teach this in some music schools. It's pass the goddamn butter. 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 Thank you, finally. So in short, polymeter, different number of beats, but the length of each beat is the same. Polyrhythm, different number of beats, but the length of each phrase is the same. So let's look at polyrhythm and polymeter use in composition. I realized that I have a song in my catalog that uses both at once. So great example to use, no copyright complications, incredible. This is Long Gone from my album, Stars. I keep dreaming of what's gone, long gone. I keep dreaming of what's gone. So firstly, the song comes across as regular 4-4 time. Most of the main elements, the bass, drums, vocals, chord changes, are happening in 4-4 time. Uh, the polymeter comes from this agogo bell, which is playing in 3-4. You can hear it kind of in the background, pan to the right. I keep dreaming of what's gone, long gone. And then the polyrhythm on top of that is this tambourine part, which includes a bunch of triplets. I keep dreaming of Fully stole that move from a Brazilian samba squad that I used to play with, by the way. I also wanna show you the bridge of this song because it has much more interesting polymeters. So the main instruments in the bridge are playing in 5-8. That's that Mission Impossible rhythm. Then there's guitar on top of that in 11-8. And then, it's in the background, but it's there, there's a clave part in 7-8. So 
So there's a breakdown of polyrhythms and polymeters in a musical context, almost like a pop context. I'm not sure how else I would categorize that song, but you can find polyrhythms in a lot of other places. For example, in rap, mostly 4-4 four, four beats, but a lot of triplet flows. My limit, I think that I'm feeling a vibe. In classical music, you'll find the odd polyrhythmic phrase anywhere from Chopin to Stravinsky. <laughs> There's a huge tradition of polyrhythms in West African music. And in math rock, definitely a lot of both polymeter and polyrhythm use. This kind of stuff is just in there for rhythmic fun. Polyrhythms perk our ears up because of the push and pull of how the rhythms fit together, and polymeters are a great way to create interest out of simpler parts. For instance, if you have two four beat loops playing together, it's gonna loop the exact same way every four beats. If you have a four beat loop playing with a five beat loop, lowest common multiple, it's gonna be 20 beats before the pattern repeats the same way again. In my weird 5, 7, 11 bridge, that full combined loop actually never occurs in the song because it just doesn't go on for that long. The lowest common multiple of 5, 7, and 11 is 385, but the uh, bass line in that song is actually playing a five bar loop, it's five chord progression. So the bass line is actually playing a 25 beat frame. The lowest common multiple of 25 and 7 and 11 is 1,925. And for context, playing 1,925 beats at the tempo that that song is in would take about nine minutes. All that to say, polymeters are a great way to do a lot with a little. You can create a lot of interest over a section of a song because the patterns don't interact with each other the same way every time. Speed it up, I don't put on the brakes. Heathens and heat in the scene in the scene. I've been heating a life on the heap and a soul in the flame. So I don't think I need to show you how to polymeter in a DAW because everything's at the same tempo. You just need to make parts that are different lengths. Uh, but how to polyrhythm, you need tricks. And there's a slow way that uh, you could do in probably any program. And then there's a fast way that might not be possible in your software. Let me show you. So here's the slow method. You're in your piano roll. Let's say you've got these two sounds that you want to use for your polyrhythm. And I'll just use the example of 7-3 again. So you're going to take the sound that you want to have seven hits of and draw them three spaces apart. One, two, three, two, three, two, three, and just keep going until you have one more than how many you want in the polyrhythm. So since I'm doing seven, I'm gonna draw eight notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need an eighth one here. Now I'm gonna draw the second rhythm. I'm gonna do three beats that are seven spaces apart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And we're also gonna do one more than the number in my polyrhythm. And if we've done it right, we should see that the last two, those extra ones we did, line up. And then we know that is where our loop needs to happen. So I'm gonna drag the loop to right before that beat, and then we have our 7-3 polyrhythm. Now here's the fast way, and I only know how to do this in Ableton, but uh, it's much easier, so you don't have to worry about the spaces, just draw how many beats you need. So we'll do seven, and we'll do three. Now once again, I'm gonna add an extra one on the end of one of them, and I'm gonna select all of those notes. And now the secret comes from this tiny gray arrow. You just need to drag that to the end of the last note of your other rhythm. And this works because the way these resizing markers work, uh, it goes from the front of the note. So that's why you need the extra note there to be able to position it exactly. Now, if I delete this note, I can loop what I have here and it's a 7-3 polyrhythm. Since Ableton allows audio warping, you can actually do this with audio too. So uh, for instance, here I've got a polymeter going on, a two beat loop and a three beat loop. But if this clip has warping on, I can shift drag over here and bring it in to make it a polyrhythm instead of a polymeter. So now we have three against two. So that's the story on polymeters and polyrhythms. Just remember, polymeters are two or more rhythms that share the same underlying pulse but have different lengths, whereas polyrhythms have different numbers of beats crammed into the same length. I'd love for you to leave a comment, let me know what you thought, let me know if there's any polyrhythmic or polymetric music that you enjoy, and I'll see you in the next video. Till another time, farewell, I'm pissed, I did it again. Dropped in for a visit and then had suits try to pin me down, but I can't listen to them. Don't